I am so very grateful that you've decided to join us here on Tuesday night. It's on April the 7th. It's during our Holy Week season. I know we have a busy week this week with Holy Week. Monday, Thursday is coming up in two days. We will have a 7 p.m. service streamed for you, and we hope that you will join us for that service. Also on Good Friday, our 10.30 a.m. Stations of the Cross. Then Easter Sunday, we will be celebrating at 9.30 a.m. We are on a fast from Holy Communion during this time of crisis. Why? Because Holy Communion doesn't make any sense with you by yourself at home without the body of Christ. Communion is meant to be taken with other brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And so again, we will continue this fast as long as this epidemic lasts and as long as we are separated from one another. And we eagerly look forward to those opportunities when we are gathered together again under one roof and participate in communion with each other and with our Lord Christ. Uh, just a uh, note of thanks before we begin for today. I want to thank all of those who are so generous in bringing in food over the last day or two. We have been richly blessed. I know that people are struggling, and so it is such an overwhelming thing that even though some of you are still struggling, maybe yourself putting food on the table, you still came down and gave some of, a, some of what you had to share with others. That is a true sign of generosity. So we're so grateful for that. We have enough, hopefully, that will get us through the next week or two and uh, help out the member, members of our community. We have helped about 20 people or so in the last week. And so we're grateful because of your generosity that we've been able to bless people who otherwise would not have the opportunity to put food on their table. People who've been laid off from their jobs, people who don't have cars so they can't get to the distribution points. I've always been very much fond of our Pittsburgh Food Bank. They have done such a fantastic job. But what they do is they set up locations where people can come and pick up food. Many of our residents aren't able to do that. And so it comes up to us, this church and this community, to be able to bless them. And you have really picked it up, Holy Trinity. I'm so grateful for you. Let's take this opportunity to pray and then we're going to do our Bible study for tonight. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful again for the privilege of being a part of uh, the blessing of this nation. We are in a historic time. It is a challenging time. There are people who are losing their lives in a battle against this disease, this, this virus. There are people, God, who are, are losing everything, their homes, their businesses, loved ones. Heavenly Father, it's a challenging time. Help us to be a generous people during these times because this is why you have placed us your church on this earth. And so multiply our efforts, God, beyond what we are even able to comprehend, that people might be blessed. We pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are struggling, those who are near death, walk with them in their journey. We pray for our nurses, our doctors. We pray for those who work in the hospitals in any capacity, for they are at the same risk. We think of all our firemen and women and police officers. Continue to keep them safe and provide for them. And for those in positions of leadership, may you continue to be with them and give them your wisdom. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you again for joining us for Bible study. Tonight we are going to be looking at the lesson that was assigned for Sunday, our lectionary on Sunday. Of course, it was Palm or Passion Sunday. We read at the end of our story, or at the end of our service on Palm Sunday, the Passion Narrative. So I think today's lesson is meant to be a companion to that. Remember I told you we have a three-year lectionary in which we take a look at a good portion of the Holy Scripture over the three-year period of time. And uh, oftentimes it will try to match Old Testament lessons and Epistle lessons with the gospel lesson for the day. And uh, so this last Sunday, they, they matched the lectionary. Folks who choose the lectionary lessons matched the book of Isaiah. In fact, let me put that down for you. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. Now, what's that A mean? That means the first half of the verse. So that's what we're supposed to read for the lesson for today. And I want to, this is really an apropos lesson as I was reading this. I think when we read this, you're going to first of all have this image or vision of the suffering of Jesus Christ. And I think it's kind of meant to be a companion to the uh, narrative of Christ's suffering and death that we read on the, on the, on the story of the Passion. 
But I also want you to see how apropos it is for us today, because I think this lesson has its lectionary context, its biblical context, but also I think God is still speaking to us through the prophet Isaiah. So look at the lesson. The Lord God has given me a tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him that is weary. Oh. Okay, I just want to stop because that verse just shook my word world. I want you to hear this again. I'm going to read this. The Lord God has given me a tongue of those who are taught. In other words, I'm educated. I can speak in an eloquent fashion. Why? So that I might sustain with the word him that is weary. Oh my goodness, is that beautiful. The word comes from God, gives us wisdom so that we can sustain the weary. I want you to see this. God's word is on my tongue so I can sustain the weary. I want you to notice that it doesn't say God's word is put on my tongue so I can condemn the guilty and tell them how wrong they are. No. God's word is put on my tongue so I can sustain those who are weary. I'm convinced that so many pastors who want to be prophetic, you know, this is a big thing in our Lutheran church, I'm preaching the prophetic voice, basically it means that I go on some type of tirade or rage against people who disagree with me, oftentimes politically, because our church tends to be very political in nature. God's word is put on my tongue so I can sustain the weary. I think sometimes pastors can be a burden to the weary because we keep heaping on condemnation. And I'm seeing this take place today in this crisis through which we're going through as a world. Oh, I see Christians doing it in the name of Christ. We're condemning that political party that's in charge. God's word is on my tongue so I can sustain the weary. Not so I can condemn a political party that's in charge. Not so I can make, belittle and make fun of people who agree with the people who are in charge. No, it's on my tongue so I can sustain the weary. This is the prophetic voice, people. The prophetic voice is not condemnation. The prophetic voice is sustenance to those who are weary. You know, just before I got here, I looked up how other countries are dealing with uh, uh, COVID-19 and what's going on in their political systems. I found out in Canada, tremendous criticism of the government for not being prepared. They're running out of supplies in their hospitals. Boy, does it sound like the United States? In Great Britain, just accusations about the unpreparedness of their healthcare system. How could they not see this? These politicians have let them down. In Italy, the right wing, of course, is using this as a criticism of a left wing government. How could they be unprepared? They're hoping to win the elections in 2020, you see. They're already seeding the thought about how horrible their politics are there in their country. In France, doctors are suing their, uh, their government because their government was so unprepared. This is starting to sound similar. You notice I've mentioned right-wing governments, left-wing governments. It doesn't seem to matter. The opposing party wants to use it to snipe and to hate and create more weariness. That's not a prophetic voice. God's word is placed on my tongue so I might sustain those of you who are weary. We are all weary. Whether it's a Republican, Republican President Donald Trump, whether it's a Democratic Governor Wolf, it's so easy to be critical and snipe, isn't it? We are not called to snipe. That's not prophecy. 
my tongue has been given God's word so I can sustain those who are weary. We have lost sight of our purpose as a church if all we do is we make this a political argument and snipe at people. We need to support and love people and understand that people are often doing the best thing that they can, even though we might think that they're wrong. Well, it's easy to think people are wrong when we're not in a position of leadership. He goes on. The Lord has opened my ear. I want you to hear this. Oh, this is important. The Lord has opened what again? My ear. My ear. So I'm speaking, but the most important thing about speaking and sustaining the weary is, is that my ears be opened up. This is really an important theme. The Lord has opened my ear. So I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to the smiters. I want you to hear this ear thing before I go on. The only way he knew what to speak is because he was listening. To whom was he listening? Well, the obvious answer is to God, right? He was listening to God, but he wasn't only listening to God. In fact, he takes a turn in the lesson for today. Not only is he listening to God so he knows the right words to say, but he's listening to those who disagree with him. The smiters, the haters, the backbiters. Listen to this. Because this is what follows immediately after God opening up his ear. Because the most important thing, if you're going to bless somebody, you have to listen. If you're not listening, your words are just going to cause nothing but weariness in other people's lives. The Lord God has opened up my ear. And I gave my back to the smiters, my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. It's, of course, talking about abusive behavior here. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So those who disagreed with me, those who hated me, I listened. I opened up my ears, despite the abuse that they showered upon me. For the Lord, verse 7, helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. So, I open up my ear because I understand people are weary. The only way for me to be able to speak words and the word of God on my tongue to sustain them is if I listen and I open up my ear to them. That's the most important thing. Remember, you've got what? Two ears, one mouth. You maybe need to shut your trap and listen a lot more. I find this just fascinating that the prophet's most important thing to be able to give that sustaining word is by opening up his ears. Wow. This is profound. Because he opens up his ears, he listens. Here's what God does. God helps me. Because it's painful to hear the opinions of other people when it disagrees with ours. When they're just filled with such rage and anger and hatred. Huh. This is why God needs to sustain us. Because there's a lot of angst today. A lot of anger today. Everybody's looking for somebody to blame. But listen to what the prophet's purpose is. I open my ears so I hear what's going on. Despite the fact that it's very uncomfortable and I feel like I'm being abused, but I listen to what God's word is and it's on my tongue so I can sustain them because I understand that their pain is coming out of their weariness. And so when I open up my mouth, I'm going to make sure that my words don't add to the weariness. Oh, this prophetic voice. The prophetic voice sustains the weary. It doesn't add to their burdens. Verse 8, he who vindicates me is near, that's God. Who will contend with me? Oh, this is the most important part of that verse, verse 8. Let us therefore stand. Are you ready for this? Together. Together. 
Let us stand together. I've heard you. I listen to you. I understand your pain. So let's stand together in this, shall we? This is what the prophet is saying. Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. Let's embrace each other. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Folks, I just have this very urgent message for us. We have to stop sniping at one another. We have to stop looking for somebody to blame. There's a crummy thing happening in this world right now. People are dealing with it the best way they know how. You might look at a politician and say, oh, I wish they were doing this. Maybe. But guess what? If you're a politician and were your politician in position of authority, the other side would be just as critical. Say, oh, I can't believe this. We just need to stop sniping and stand together. We need to open up our ears so that we can sustain the weary. We are all weary right now. Our president is weary. Our governor is weary. Our senators are weary. Our representatives are weary. The men and women who work in the hospitals are weary. The men and women who protect our health and our safety, they're weary. We're sitting in our homes and we're sniping at each other. Maybe we need to stop because the world is weary. And we need to sustain them with a word. But that word is only going to come to us when we open up our ears and we stand together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is the prophetic word for this day. We are called to listen with these two ears to one another so that we might have a word that will sustain those who are weary. All of us are weary. And so I'm praying that you would help our words to be kind. Let us stand together even with those who are adversaries. For he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and send you forth in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We look forward to being with you this Thursday, Monday, Thursday, at 7 p.m. God's blessing on you on your continued Lenten journey.